Hey girlfriend, this is Jan James. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast, where women who have endured breast cancer learn to have fulfillment over frustration, clarity over confusion, and faith over fear. We tackle the issues that many of our sisters face after a breast cancer diagnosis, from brain fog to fear of recurrence, from menopause to sex after breast cancer. This is the place to learn how to have hope after breast cancer. So strap yourself in. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast. Hi everyone, it's Jan James, and this is our first Thrivers Thursday segment from the community at Hope After Breast Cancer. Um, I just came up with this idea the other day because I happened to notice the gal's comments, the one that we're gonna interview today, her name is Pamela Powers, and she had so many positive comments on our um, on our support group wall on Facebook that I just thought, I need to get to know this lady. So that's <laughs> good. So we're going to just talk to her a little bit about her journey. And Pamela, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Glad, you're, is- glad you're here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you and about your diagnosis and the year and just a little bit about yourself. Definitely. Uh, My name is Pamela Powers. I am 41 years old. I'm a single mother of three wonderful boys, and I was diagnosed when I was 38 years old. Uh, The day after Christmas in 2017, I was told that, yes, it was cancer and that I needed to take a plan of action. So um, I did. And I don't know if you'd like to hear a little bit about my process with the whole journey or... Well, tell us a little bit. Can you tell us what kind of cancer you were diagnosed with? Yes, I was diagnosed with ER positive cancer and it was on the right side. Um, But then I decided to to go for the double mastectomy because I didn't want to go back to see the doctor again in a couple of years down the road. So that's, you know what, I had a single mastectomy at first and then a year and a half later, they found a blip on the other side. I was like, get rid of it. Cause I'm, I'm with you. I should have done a double at the beginning, but you know, everybody makes their own decision for their own reasons. So I totally get that. That's fine. Hey, um, tell, I want to tell the folks that are watching that, um, I, I decided to pick Pamela because of something that she wrote on our Facebook group wall, as I said. And so let me just read this to you. Um, I had put up a challenge question that said, are the words you say to yourself internally words of love? And guess what she said? She said, my internal words did not used to be of love. I used to be very hateful towards myself. Grew up always thinking less of myself, not sure why I grew up like that. I'm sure it was outside influences through my childhood, but almost a year ago, it finally clicked for me. It started by changing my diet out of all things. Now I'm in an awesome place mentally and continue to work on it. Also practicing gratitude every morning has helped. So I'm showering myself with words of love every day now. Girlfriend, that makes me excited. <laughs> so it's so many of the things that I do too. But tell us a little bit about what was that turning point for you? What happened? Well, a uh, turning point for me was uh, I, I one day was thinking to myself, I had a conversation with one of my kids and, and they were a little down on themselves. And I caught myself telling him, hey, when you think those things, when you use those mean words towards yourself, do you imagine yourself telling me that I am those things? And he said, no, absolutely not. So a turning point for me was, okay, what kind of example I'm giving my children? And then um, what, what am I going to be doing uh, years down the road when I'm being negative and hateful towards myself? And then I'm seeing my kids being hateful towards themselves. And it's usually like a never ending cycle. So that was a a part of the turning point. And I started, you know, doing research, reading. Um, I consulted with my um, medical team, with my oncologist, and she gave me some good information. But the one thing that did turn it around for me, um, starting with not feeding my body the foods that kind of had me trapped and that 
it, it's kind of a vicious cycle because you feel upset about something during your day or about yourself and you want to comfort. So you go for the treats. And then five minutes later, I was hating myself for, for eating those treats. So it had changed from where I started feeling bad about myself to now I hate myself because I ate this and then later I wanted more and, and the, the cycle never ends. So um, like I mentioned in what Jan just read us, it started for me with um, taking the necessary steps to change my diet. And when you talk about diet, it's not only um, food diet, it's your mental diet. It's everything you're feeding your body. Uh, you know, for a lot of people practicing self-care and doing personal development, it's something that makes them a little defensive for some reason, but letting that barrier come down and you say, okay, it's working for some people, so I'm going to give it a try. So personal development, through personal development, I recently discovered gratitude, practicing gratitude every morning, even for the littlest of things. And um us as people that have been through breast cancer is not a little thing to be thankful every day for having taken a breath every morning i woke up i'm here so that's a big one it's not little mm -hmm. and then the little things which are you know i'm i have shelter my kids have clothing i have food i'm able to provide whichever it is that works for you but take that time in the morning get up a little bit earlier in the morning and take 20 to 30 minutes to be grateful, to uh, positive self-talk to you, how amazing you are, because you are amazing, just the way you are. And also plan out your day. That like that helps tremendously. And it has made a big impact for me because I can tell you, I was a number one hateful fan of me. I was number one mm -hmm. hater towards myself so well, and it was very unfortunate very very unfortunate for so many years I think so many of us go through that kind of thing um almost unconsciously we don't really realize how we're talking to ourselves internally we don't we're not paying attention like in a lot of it I think comes from our upbringing did you find as you've been doing your personal development did you find that things that had happened in your family when you were younger, did that impact you? So that's one of the biggest uh, parts for me. It was accepting that a lot of, a lot of that self-hatred or self-negative talk comes from a very early age. So um, I think that's why I was able to talk to my child as well now. Because when I was little, I would hear a comment that one of my friends or a cousin or somebody from the outside made about me. And I would internalize, take it in, and then it was just, I would run with it. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I'm ugly, or uh, my, my teeth are broken, or uh, they, whichever. It is, you're a child, so um, your family should be that supportive cushion for you to say no honey no 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 like you, you don't talk like that about yourself but it's not common like we just kind of run through life being very negative uh about our own selves and i don't think it's caught i don't think it's done on purpose by your family members i know they love you but it's not caught and it's not something that anybody speaks of. So you kind of just grow up and you, you carry all this baggage with you of negative talk, like inner critic always taking over your thoughts throughout your day. And I don't know, it's just, it, it comes from early on. So it's really hard to fight off, but it is possible. And I can tell you that I can attest to that. Definitely. That's so awesome. Hey, a um, couple things. Um just popped into my head. Um, you had mentioned earlier when we were talking um, something about bullying. So I want to talk about that. But then can I, I don't want to forget to ask you, when you're talking about having an attitude of gratitude, which happens to be our topic for next month on the Hope After Breast Cancer group page, um, do you journal? Do you have a gratitude journal? 
Definitely. You do? Uh, awesome. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's, it's very new. Like I said, when I started, I discovered uh, the gratitude attitude from personal development. It is recommended that you journal. So um, my, my oldest son gave me this awesome journal for Christmas. And that's where I've been documenting everything. Like, so the journaling just barely started recently, but um, the self-positivism, it's, it's more from a while back. But I have this recently discovered that journaling helps you. Like I said, um, your, your gratitude, then your, posi your positive uh, influence into your own self. And also you create a list of goals for the day. You plan out your day. And it just makes the day go by, um, not easier because life is life, but in a more uh, calm and organized way and say, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it, it also protects your inner peace. Like your inner peace is very important too. So all of that as a routine, your journaling will help you. It will help you to uh, get through your day in a, in a more peaceful way. If Talk I'm, about the inner peace. Tell me about that. What have you learned about that? Uh, okay, so I, I never had inner peace because I was always, like we've talked about, I was very hateful towards me. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that my value was measured in how much I could do for others. So here I am being mean to myself, not liking myself but wanting to please others to to maybe make that um switch so if they like me maybe i'll start liking me so i never had inner peace because i was trying to please you know everybody family kids friends siblings uh, the boss at work i mean i would give my all to work and it's so hard to be trying to please everybody or to make others feel better when you are not feeling better yourself. So um, there was no inner peace and your inner peace is the most important part of you that will get you through every situation, whatever the situation is. If you are calm and you are confident in yourself, you can get through anything. Do you feel it's selfish to take care of yourself? I used to think that it was selfish very selfish and um even on tv uh the other day i i by accident i watch a clip of this very famous star that has her show and i found that her and two other people that were on the panel with her they were like what is this about self-care and self-love like no it, it is it's an amazing thing and it's not that you're being egocentric or self-centered or, or, or selfish. Uh, I now believe, because I used to be that person that didn't believe in self-care or self-love or, or anything like that, is uh, you need to take care of you, your inner you, you the way you talk to yourself every day in order for you to truly mean what you do for others and to have that for others. So Absolutely. that's the only way I kind of explain it to myself every day. You know what? You know what it reminds me of is when we fly in an airplane, the stewardess or steward will say, in the event of a rapid decompression, please put your face mask on, your oxygen mask on before you put the oxygen mask on others. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't help others. Exactly. We can't. And not to the best of our ability anyway. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm totally with you on that. Hey, talk to me about, you had mentioned bullying in our conversation earlier. Um, was that about bullying that happened in school or in work or was it you bullying yourself? Well, <laughs> it's a process. So little me started kind of bullying myself even though you, you don't really realize you're bullying yourself because you're just like being mean to yourself and then you hit a point where like you go through elementary school and then some kids say different things about you then you get into middle school and you start your body starts changing right so everybody's uh body is different Every, you are very unique your body is 
the body you got and it's very unique and beautiful and in its own way. But if you, know, you don't have anybody telling you this, when your body's changing and you're going through all these things, um, kids would say things like, because I was never the voluptuous um, Coke bottle shaped girl. So other girls were developing, you know, and, and kids would bully me saying that I was a, I was as flat as an ironing board or I was as flat as a surfing board. Um, they would just say things uh, to make fun. And my defense mechanism was always laughing with them about those things. But I, what I did is internalize, I packed them in and brought them along my journey into being an adult. And, and it just, it, it has a toll on you. It's, it's not, not a good thing. Those Definitely. things are heavy to carry, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I heard years ago that, I, I don't even remember who said it, but um, somebody told me about my past stuff. You should pack it in a suitcase. And you should put the suitcase down on the path you're on right next to you. And you should walk away. If you want to go back and pick up the suitcase, you can. Or you can just leave it there. And I thought that's so smart to just like leave it where you're at. And if you want to carry it, you can. I, and I, there's another story too. Listen to me now. I'm the storyteller. Here we go. <laughs> One of my girlfriends, this, this is a true story. You know, there's... Um, what do they call them? Pyramids in um, Mexico that you can climb. And a girlfriend of mine that I know went with a group of teenagers to that, to climb the pyramids. And she was wearing a backpack. Well, this is interesting. Some of the smart aleck high schoolers were picking up small rocks and her backpack was partially open. So as she climbed the um, pyramid, more and more rocks were in her backpack. And as she went higher and higher, of course, it got harder. Yeah. So we have to realize that we have been picking up rocks along the way for many, many years in lots of ways. And again, take the backpack off, leave it on the path, walk away. You know, I mean, that would be my encouragement. So that's good. Hey, one last question for you, kiddo. Um, I just, I'm so grateful to have met you and just super grateful for the wisdom that you're sharing with our girls. And, you know, when you, when you are looking at adversity, say something happens today that just is totally unexpected. Like, what is your process now for, I mean, does it throw you into a tailspin or do you, how do you look at it in order to um, take care of it? It, it definitely, my new uh, way of life and my new attitude towards life and first of all, towards myself, um, it, co it comes with its perks and one of them is confidence and self-belief. So what before used to uh, throw me into this uh, frantic uh, damage control mode, now I am able to keep calm and it's not an easy thing because, you know, life throws these curveballs at you and you don't know what it's going to be until it's right in your face. So now I am able to say everything in everything has a solution. Okay. So now we just have to define what steps to take to get there. And I know that is not, like I said, it's not easy. I used to, um, I'm a single mom. So uh, finances, you know, have always been up and down and never knowing, you know, how I was going to make it through the week. Um, I'm going to tell you something funny and, and I'm not embarrassed of it because I know s somebody out there has been through this. When I was, um, my kids were younger and I didn't get paid, let's say until Friday, but it was Wednesday and we didn't have food in the fridge. So I would write a check and go to the grocery store and say, oh my God, please, I hope that they accept the check. And that way it won't clear until two days later when I get paid, right? So we've all been through ups and downs, but now I know that with all the knowledge that I've acquired and with my positive affirmations, I know that I am going to be okay through everything. 
And that confidence feels so good and I had never experienced it. And just let me tell you, like there's a solution for everything. Um, don't lose yourself and don't panic and be frantic. You will get through whatever it is that life throws at you. Like there's a solution for everything, except, you know, we know what there's no solution for. So well, you'll, and you're you'll smart. be able to you're, get through it. Yeah, you're smart. You have a 1000% batting average that you've gotten through life so far. You figure things out, right? We all have. So you, I, I appreciate that. I think that's really great to point out the fact that having confidence in ourselves and the way that um, we've learned in our experience, there's always an answer. That's really, really great wisdom. Well, I want to thank you so much for being our first Thrivers Thursday <laughs> guest. So thanks, thank you Pamela. for having me. Thank you. No, I'm really it. glad. I'm so glad to connect with you too. So thank you so much. And folks, just watch for our next Thrivers Thursday. Thanks for being here. Take care. Bye-bye. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. I hope you found some nuggets to encourage you and give you hope. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You never want to miss an episode. And we'd love to know how we're doing, so please be sure to leave us a review. Until next time, this is Jan James encouraging you to remember there is hope after breast cancer. See you next time.